In this video, I'm going to cover all the ports you will need to know in order to answer any of the Network Plus questions. And it's important to know that a lot of the questions and performance-based questions will require a good understanding of the different ports. There are a total of 20 ports you will need to know for this exam, and I will only go over exactly what you need to know about each one so you can spend more time studying other parts of the exam. This was a highly requested video from a lot of my students, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so to start things off, the first on the list is File Transfer Protocol, also known as FTP. FTP is used for transferring files between a client and a server. Uh, port 20 handles the data, and port 21 manages the control commands. FTP is on port 20 and 21, but as port 20 and 21, they are considered generally unsafe. Uh, but there's a way to make it safer that we'll talk about here soon. A great way to understand FTP is to think about cars driving on the street uh, for port 20, so the data. Now that acts as cars driving on the road, while port 21, which acts as the controller, that's going to be things like traffic lights directing traffic. Up next, we have a very popular one for all the CompTIA exams, and that is going to be Secure Shell, uh, also known as SSH. SSH is used for secure remote login and command execution between systems, and it's going to encrypt the communication to keep it safe. SSH is on port 22, and it is considered safe. Also, an exam tip with CompTIA is that if you see SSH on the exam anywhere, just think of that as the secure option. An easy way to understand SSH is to think of super secure highway, so SSH where you have cars acting as data going from one destination to another and barriers or walls on each side of the highway protecting the cars. The cars represent the data and the barriers on either side symbolize encryption, keeping the data safe to their final destination. All right, so next on the list is Secure File Transfer Protocol, also known as SFTP. SFTP is a secure way to transfer files and it operates over SSH, so port 22, to ensure encryption and protection during the data transfer. Now, it is important to know for SFTP that it shares the same port as SSH, so port 22, uh, because it uses SSH. And SFTP is the safe version of FTP. SFTP is kind of like sending a locked package in a secure delivery van. The package, so your file, is locked up tight with encryption uh, before it's sent. And the van, which is SFTP, ensures it travels safely to the recipient, who is the only one with the key to unlock it once they get the package. This keeps the file protected from prying eyes during the transfer. Up next, we have Telnet. And Telnet allows remote command line access to devices, but it's very insecure because data, including passwords, they are sent in plain text. Telnet operates on port 23, and an exam tip with Telnet is that if it's referenced in a question, just remember it is not secure. Like, at all, don't use it. Very easy way to understand Telnet is to think of it as tell everyone, because that's exactly what it is doing. Think of it like you're talking to somebody on the phone about something super secret, but it's on speakerphone for everyone around you to hear. That would be a perfect example of Telnet. Next on the list is Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, um, also known as SMTP. And SMTP is used for sending emails between mail servers, um, and it's the standard protocol for outgoing mail. SMTP operates on port 25, but it is important to know that by default, SMTP on port 25 is considered insecure. Uh, but I'll talk about the secure version of SMTP here in a little bit but both of them are on the exam objectives. And for whatever reason, back in the day, I had a very hard time remembering what SMTP stood for and what it did. Um, but an easy way to remember it is instead of simple mail transfer protocol, think of it as send mail to post box. Hopefully that helps. Alrighty, so up next is gonna be one that you will see so many times during your studies and most likely on the actual exam. And that is gonna be domain name system, also known as DNS. Now, DNS translates human-friendly uh, domain names like google.com into IP addresses that computers use to communicate. DNS operates on port 53, 
And it's not inherently secure because DNS was designed for functionality instead of security. An easier way to remember DNS is instead of domain name uh, system, think of directory name service. And DNS, in a way, kind of acts like a phone book for the internet. Just as a phone book helps you find a person's phone number based on their name, DNS is gonna help your device find the IP address, which is the phone number of a server or a device when you type it in a domain such as google.com. Next on the list, and one you will see a lot on the Network Plus exam, is gonna be Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, uh, also known as DHCP. And DHCP is gonna automatically assign IP addresses and network configurations to devices, making network setup quick and easy. DHCP consists of two ports, port 67, which is used by the DHCP server to receive client requests, and port 68, which is used by the client to receive server responses. And very similar to DNS, DHCP is not inherently secure as it was designed for convenience, uh, not security. This does, however, make DHCP susceptible to several attacks. And a way to kind of remember DHCP, um, it's kind of like, think like a pizza shop selling pizza. Port 67 is the pizza shop, which acts as the server. They're the ones taking the pizza orders. Customers are gonna be port 68. So they're the clients. They're the ones receiving the pizzas. In this case, the IP address is the pizza, and the pizza shop is the DHCP server handing out the pizzas. Okay, so up next we have Trivial File Transfer Protocol, also known as TFTP. And TFTP is a simplified version of FTP used for transferring small files without authentication or encryption. It's commonly used for configuration file transfers and network booting. TFTP uses port 69 and it is not secure because it lacks authentication, encryption, uh, and many of the other safeguards found in a more robust protocol like SFTP that we talked about earlier. A good way to remember TFTP is think of tiny file transfer protocol because that's exactly what it is. It transfers tiny files. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to another one that you'll see a lot, and that's gonna be hypertext transfer protocol, also known as HTTP. And HTTP is the foundation of web communication, allowing browsers to retrieve and display web pages. HTTP operates on port 80, and it's very insecure. It's very important to understand that as well. HTTP transmits data in plain text, which makes it very susceptible to many attacks, uh, most commonly man in the middle attacks, but there are many more. Now, while HTTP on port 80 is very insecure, there is a solution to it that we'll talk about here in a little bit. An easy way to remember HTTP is instead of hypertext transfer protocol, just think of how text travels publicly because that's exactly what's happening with HTTP. Next, we have network time protocol, also known as NTP. And NTP, it's gonna synchronize clocks uh, between computers and devices on a network to ensure accurate timekeeping. And this is critical for logs, authentication, and other time-sensitive operations. NTP operates on port 123 and is not inherently secure. Uh, there are attacks, but most of them are gonna be outside the scope of the Network Plus exam. An easy way to remember NTP is to think of 123 as sequential, um, like a ticking clock, symbolizing time synchronization. NTP is on port 123, has to do with time, and you just count to yourself. One, two, three, and I hope that makes sense. And uh, yes, that was a tip from Jason Dion, by the way, and it's a pretty great tip. Okay, so next up we have Simple Network Management Protocol, also known as SNMP. And SNMP is used for monitoring and managing network devices like routers, switches, and servers. SNMP operates on two different ports, port 161, which is used by the SNMP manager to send requests to devices, and port 162, which is used by devices to send alerts, sometimes referred to as traps, to the manager. SNMP is not secure by default, but mostly in its earlier versions, such as uh, V1 and V2C. This was replaced with V3. Um, V2C and V3 are within the exam objectives, but all you need to know is that V3 is the secure version, and any other version is considered insecure by CompTIA. A way to understand SNMP is think of port 161 as the manager's hotline to devices. 
and port 162 as the emergency alert line that devices use to call for help. This would enable two-way communication between the managers and the devices. All right, so next we're gonna talk about lightweight directory access protocol, also known as LDAP. And LDAP is used to access and manage directory information such as user accounts, group memberships, and device details in a centralized directory service. LDAP operates on port 389 and is not considered secure as it transmits data including credentials in plain text, making it vulnerable to interception and attacks. Now, there is a newer version that's more secure that we'll talk about here in a little bit. A way to remember LDAP is to think of it as a let's discover all people, where it acts as a phone book for different networks, where you can look up and manage users and devices. Let's go ahead and jump to the next one. And next up on the list is gonna be Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, also known as HTTPS. And HTTPS is the secure version of HTTP. And it's gonna encrypt communication between a web browser um, and a server using SSL slash TLS. Its main purpose is protect data from eavesdropping and tampering. HTTPS operates on port 443. And like I said, it is considered the secure protocol as it's a widely used protocol to protect data transmitted between a user's browser and a web server. An easy way to remember HTTPS is to think about it like sending a letter in the mail that would require a person's signature. The seal, which acts as the encryption, keeps your message private so no one can read it. The address, which in this case is gonna be the URL, ensures it gets to the right person. And the recipient can only open the letter with their unique key, which acts as the person's signature. Also, a CompTIA tip. Whenever CompTIA refers to HTTP and HTTPS, remember that HTTP will be the insecure protocol and HTTPS is the secure protocol. Okay, so next on the list is server message block, also known as SMB. And SMB is used for sharing files, printers, and other resources between devices on a network, and it also allows users to access shared files and folders as if they were local. SMB operates on port 445 and is not secure by default. Um, earlier versions of SMB may transmit data without encryption, uh, it makes it susceptible to eavesdropping. In fact, the notorious ransomware attack, uh, WannaCry, actually exploited a vulnerability in SMB v1 that allowed attackers to execute code on a target system without authentication. Now, there are technically five different types of SMB versions. However, knowing them are outside the scope of the Network Plus exam. But what you need to know for the exam is what SMB does, its functionality, and what port it operates on. A way to remember SMB is thinking of it as like a shared library for your network. The server acts as the librarian managing books, which are shared files, and printers, while users with a library card, which acts as proper access, can borrow or use resources. Next up on the list is gonna be syslog. And syslog is used for collecting and organizing log messages from devices like routers, switches, and servers to a centralized logging server. In information security, it's a common practice to aggregate logs from syslog into a SIM. Syslog is going to operate on port 514 and is not designed to be secure per se as its main function is simplicity and efficiency. Uh, but there is a more secure version of syslog that operates over TLS, but that's also not within the scope of the Network Plus exam. An analogy for syslog is going to be something like, think of employees writing on a piece of paper and then putting that paper in the jar for manager to review. The employees in this example act as a device and the paper acts as a log. And the manager is gonna act as a central server for the manager to review. Next up, we're gonna have Simple Mail Transfer Protocol Secure, also known as SMTPS. And SMTPS is the secure version of SMTP, which we did talk about a little bit earlier, that operates on port 25, um, it's going to use SSL and TLS to encrypt email communication, ensuring that emails are going to be transmitted securely and cannot be intercepted. Now, SMTPS operates on port 587. However, in the real world, it could also operate on port 465. Uh, but it's important to know for the Network Plus exam that SMTPS operates on port 587. An easy way to remember SMTPS is to remember SMTP, uh, but with extra security attached to it. 
And a CompTIA tip is if port 25 and port 587 are in the same question, just remember that port 25 is considered insecure and port 587 is gonna be considered secure. Okay, so next we have lightweight directory access protocol over SSL, also known as LDAPs. And LDAPs is the secure version of LDAP, encrypting communication between clients and directory servers using SSL or TLS to protect sensitive directory information like user credentials. Now in the real world, according to a lot of people, uh, LDAPs just stands for lightweight directory access protocol secure, as SSL is actually deprecated. However, in the Network Plus objectives, it is still referred to as lightweight directory access protocol over SSL. And before I forget, I don't want to forget to mention that LDAPs operates on port 636 and is considered secure. A way to remember LDAPs is to think of the analogy for the insecure version, LDAP. If you recall in that analogy, you think of it as let's discover all people where it acts as a phone book for different networks and where you can look up and manage users and devices. Now with LDAPs, that phone book is locked away in a security deposit at a bank. And if you've ever used one, you know that the security deposits are in a private room that you can only access if you show appropriate ID. The private room acts as the encryption and your ID is gonna act as your digital signature. Next, we have Structured Query Language Server, also known as SQL Server. And SQL is the default port used by Microsoft SQL Server for communicating with database management systems. Um, it's also gonna allow clients to connect to and interact with databases for storing, retrieving, and managing data. SQL operates on port 1433 and is not inherently safe. It requires configuration to make it secure. However, digging this deep into securing SQL is considered um, outside the scope of the CompTIA exam objectives. An easy way to understand SQL is to think of it like a database used in a library. Um, after all, SQL is used to manage databases. The server acts as the librarian, managing a vast collection of books, which are the data tables. Clients, which act as the users of applications, they're gonna submit requests. Um, in SQL, this is called queries. And they're gonna submit requests to find specific books or perform tasks. And the librarian is gonna retrieve exactly what they need efficiently. Next up, we're gonna have Remote Desktop Protocol, also known as RDP. And RDP allows users to remotely connect to and control other computers' desktops as if they were physically present, um, commonly used for IT support or remote work. RDP operates on port 3389, and according to CompTIA, it is considered secure. However, RDP is not secure by default, and leaving RDP exposed to the internet is a major risk, as it can be targeted by brute force attacks or ransomware campaigns. I don't really have a way to remember RDP or analogy or anything, uh, but it's important to remember, so yeah, sorry about that. And last but not least, we have Session Initiation Protocol also known as SIP. And SIP is used to establish, manage, and terminate communication sessions, such as voice or video calls over IP networks. SIP technically operates on port 5060 and 5061. However, it's important to know the difference between the two ports. SIP on 5060 is considered unencrypted, so that's bad. And SIP on 5061 is encrypted over TLS, so that's good. So here's a pretty crappy analogy for SIP. Uh, SIP is like a digital event planner for calls. It sends out invites, connects everyone, keeps the session running, um, and wraps it up when it's done. However, SIP doesn't handle the conversation itself, just the setup and management of the communication. And there you have it. Those are all the ports that you may come across on the Network Plus uh, CompTIA exam. And it's super important to learn the port name, the acronym for it, the port, what it does, and if it is secure or insecure, because those are the different things that are gonna be required to know to answer the question correctly. And that's the end of the video. If you're still here, thanks for watching. Uh, until next time, good luck.